canning chicken thighs using Denali lids and rings. These hands are washed, uh, jars are clean. I've got lids soaking in some warm water over here. The chicken is cut up. Let me just turn it here just a little bit so you can see. Uh, that is about nine pounds of chicken thighs. I've got a couple of packages of chicken breast in the refrigerator that if I need to use those to top off jars or to top off the canner, I can can those. Um, so what I'm going to do is you want to leave about an inch of head space. I have got, this is the Sam's um, Organic, the Great Value Chicken Broth that I'm going to be using to top it off with. Um, I opened this one last night. It's been in the fridge. And then I've got one more just in case I need it. I am not going to put any seasoning in with this batch. Um, for the next batch, I'm going to put some herbs to provenance in it. And let's get this loaded. It's going to be cold packing into cold water. I've got about um, three inches of space in my canner over here. A space of water in my canner over here. And on my canner by the one handle that is not, it's the opposite across from where the V is at. There is a mark that is made into it. And it is, let me find it here. It's right there. And it's a little indent that is the watermark on it. Plus I've used this often enough that there is actually a ring going around it already. So let's get started here. I have got my vinegar. I have got uh, the lids, I've got my debubbler, and I grab a paper towel that I can use to uh, clean the lids off. You want to be very careful since this is a meat that there is no grease on the lid, on the rim because if you do have it, it's not going to seal. Or it's not going to stay sealed, let's put it like that. So I'm going to pack this in. You don't want to pack meat in too tight. And the reason being that um, you want the water or the broth to be able to circulate around it. That's how you get an even heating on the meat. If this is just solidly packed in here, whether it's chicken, beef, pork, whatever, um, you run the risk of whatever's on the inside, the inner part of this uh, jar, not... Um, not being thoroughly heated. Okay. And I did give this a good shake. And once again, my hands are clean. And something I should have done before I did this even was take my deep bubbler and just try and kind of um, even it out and pack it down. Put a little bit more. Well, actually, you know what? I think I'm good on the broth. It is right here to that end. So let's do some more. I think I'm going to go ahead and load the rest of these up with chicken and then I will just pour the broth in since we're doing this cold pack. And then um, I did leave some of the fat on this. Whoops, there we go. Um, I I've only canned chicken breast before. I've never done a whole chicken or um, other parts. I've never done like bone in before, which I am hoping to do. But um, the videos that I have seen, um, you know, I've watched the Bigs Prep do it. I've watched um, uh, Sutton's Days do it. I've seen, gosh, I don't know who all, Linda's Pantry. Um, I've seen Lori's uh, pantry kitchen do it. Kitchen pantry, I'm sorry, Lori. Do it before. I don't know that I've seen her do thighs, though. I've seen her do chicken breast before. And it could be that I just missed it if she did do it. But I watch a variety because I want to see the different techniques of it. Usually I use just wide mouth for this, but um, I had these um, 
regular mouth that were already clean, so they're getting used up. I think I'm going to have more than enough for another batch of this. Trying not to touch the top. Oops, well, that one, I guess, wanted to go in there, huh? Sorry about my arm being in the way. Flying all over the place, aren't you guys? Okay. So let's see here. Let me. I was surprised because um, I have never done it whenever I haven't gotten the liquid in it with the debubbler, but I was surprised at how much more room you do have with it. You want to make sure that your chicken is covered all the way. I'm so impressed that the dog is staying quiet. That is so unusual. He's just laying here watching. He's probably waiting for me to drop some chicken. Let me go grab some regular. Whoops, sorry. Ring. Let's see. Let's see what we not to trip over a dog here. I'm not sure where the cats are at. Usually they're over here with me too. Okay, let me wash my hands real quick here. Then I'm going to go around with the debubbler here. And... Just make sure I don't know if you can see down here where there's the, there was an air pocket down there. And the lids uh, that I'm using are Denali. I started using them this summer and I've gotten a 100% seal. And let me tell you, I have canned a ton. I think I'm going to take that one out. It's a little bit too full. And that one too. On it. But yeah, you do want to make sure that all the chicken is completely covered. So it means taking out a piece, putting in more broth to get your one inch head space. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to go around again with my debubbler just to make sure. I get paranoid whenever it comes to the meat. Actually, I'm kind of paranoid with all of it. Um, 
and making sure that I've taken precautions with it. A little bit more broth just to make sure that it stays covered and you can count on some of this siphoning out most likely and you can count on the chicken um, creating some but since this did not have any injected into it. I may not get that much liquid from the chicken, to be honest with you. Okay, you know what, let me, sorry, lean it in front of you again. Get a spoon here. I'm just gonna take a little bit out of this and let's put it in this one. And that one, that does it. Okay, that's good. So let me get my hands washed off here. And then, dry it off. Got my paper towel. Some people use cloth and that's perfectly okay to do that. Make sure that it's one that is lint free or washcloths. I've used washcloths quite often actually. I get out of the habit of doing that. I should go back to that. Do this one more time, going around. Okay, so then we are going to do our insert. Two wide mouth. And since these aren't hot, I don't have to hurry. Since this is all a cold pack. They really do try and not touch the underneath of it where the rubber or the inner wood is at. And on there, get my rings. And then it's finger tight. You can just take these two fingers, your middle finger in this one, and just kind of screw it. And once again, we're using the Denali. Whoop, I hope you can see them in the reflection there. If you order, I want to say it's like $60 worth. It might be less than that. Um, it's free shipping for these. And I got them so quick. I didn't have to wait hardly at all. They were here within like four days of when I ordered them. So these are pints, they will go for 75 minutes. If it was um, quartz, it would be, I wanna say 85, but I'm gonna have to double check on that. I don't can in quartz very often. I like the size of the, um, of the pint jars for what we use. And oh, one thing I almost forgot to do, I am going to dump the rest of the white vinegar in. That keeps the jars clean. Also keeps your um, 
canner, nice and clean, also nice and shiny. This is gonna go in the refrigerator until I can get to the next batch. And I'm going to, let me find a washcloth here, wipe off my stove. And I'm going to, usually, if you guys have watched me before, I've had it here on this back burner. I'm gonna put it on this burner that's toward the front here. That way the steam is coming out toward me. It dried off here. So things that you wanna look for whenever you are doing your canner is this is the air vent <laughs> valve I think it was called it's this one you want to make sure that it moves up and down nice and easy like that you want to look through the hole here make sure that you can see through it every day that I can once I'm through for the day I take um, one of these pipe cleaners and I go through it and that makes sure that this stays clean and clear. Other thing that you want to look at is this pressure valve. This is the emergency one that if pressure builds up too much inside the canner, this is going to pop off, let that excess pressure come out. Um, I usually turn this toward the back of the stove. That way, if it ever should happen, it's going to spray out that way. It's not going to spray toward me. I keep a heavy duty towel, big towel close by that if this should happen, I can throw it over it by the time I reach in the back to turn it off. Um, that's just another safety factor. I have never heard of this happening with these. I mean, this one is like 20 years old or with any canner that has this pressure release. If you guys have heard of somebody, you know, put it in the comments because I'm curious because out of all the canning groups I belong to and all the people that I know that can, it's never happened, but it's the safety feature that's there. You also want to inspect your ring make sure that it's in good condition, that it's not cracked, that it's still really pliable. Now some people I know will put Vaseline around the inside of this. I have never done that. And you know what time this thing is on? I'm going to get my manual back out and check that. But I have never ever done that. And this is, this is the second ring in 20 years. And the only reason I replaced the first one was I was stupid. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I had this flipped over like that. And I turned on a burner on this side and that damaged the, the ring. So lesson learned there, okay? So let's get this on. It's got the V right here. It says close open. And you want to line it up with just before you get. And now it's not gonna go on because I'm trying to show you how to do it here. Um, and then this will slide and that locks it in place. Now I've got my weights um, and I'll get this, but I'm gonna turn it on. I turn on both burners on my stove. It gives it a little bit more even heat, I think. And uh, it just does better. And it's not just one little burner trying to heat this up. I've got the addition of the other one trying to heat it up too. Um, once this pops up, I'm gonna let this vent for 10 minutes. I'll see a steam coming through it. After that is whenever I put the weights on it. Once it starts to jiggle, that's whenever we start timing it for our 75 minutes. And I usually actually go five minutes over. I usually put the timer on for like 80 minutes instead. So we'll get this going and move on to the next one. I'm gonna tell you real quick, you don't have to put these up on high high to get them to heat up. Um, it will work from, uh, for me, if I have them at about eight, and then once this actually heats up and gets going, I can actually turn it down to about five and a half. And that is enough to keep the jiggler going. So you don't have to run it at that really high speed. You will get to know your stove. Each stove it make is different as to how high or how low you go with it, but just pay attention and, you know, run it at the lowest one that you can, but make sure that it's high enough to be safe with it. So I will see you guys in a little bit. I'm bringing you back because the uh, steam vent 
has popped up and sealed. You can, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is steam that is coming up through the pipe. So we start our timing for 10 minutes now. So let me go ahead and get it on. Oops, sorry. there we go. And I want to show you on these weights. This is an older Presto, but it still works great. I'm very comfortable with using it. I've had it for about 18, 20 years, but it comes with weights where if you take, I can get it off here. Oh, come on. Now it's not gonna come off. I can't believe that. It's got two five pound weights and then this by itself is five pounds. And for my elevation, I do 10 pounds. I need to get this one weight off. I had it on there every time I had it was not using it. There we go, I think, maybe not. There we go, there it came off. So this just screws right back on. I'm gonna step away because that is actually pretty hot over there. Let me turn this down just a little bit here. It's about seven. So once my 10 minutes is up, this will go on it. I'll wait for it to start rocking. And then that's whenever we start timing. But we've got eight more minutes to go, almost nine minutes to go on the time. So I will bring so you the back. the 10 minutes is up. The steam is coming out. This has sealed. I'm gonna put my weights on. It is 10 pound weights. You just come in from the side, pop it on there wait for it to start rocking. You want it to rock um, maybe three to four times a minute. Um, once we hit that, I'm gonna turn the temp down just a little bit on the stove. And as long as I maintain that rocking, we're doing good. I'm just gonna hold it for this. It, you can see it rocking back and forth like that. That's basically how we want it. So I'm gonna turn mine down. Oh, boy, I have a hot back there. So five and a half. Now a little bit more. And I'm gonna set my timer for 75 minutes. This is putting off a lot of heat back here, you guys. So that's an hour. Oops, uh, did I overshoot, overshoot it, huh, guys? <sighs> that's an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm going to set it for an hour and 20 minutes to be on the safe side. So I may turn this down just a little bit more. We'll see how this goes. And um, then I will bring you back. After it is cooled off, I'm going to turn it off. I wait for this to drop back down. And then I will take the weight off of it. I don't know if I'll get that on camera or not, but I will try to. There's a fuzz on there. Um, but I will try to remember to do that. And then we'll have the stem The irrigant lock has dropped down. I'm going to take the weight off and I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. And then whenever we come back, I'll loosen the lid and we'll see how it did. So the 10 minutes is up and I'm just going to loosen this a minute. I'm going to take the lid off, turning it away from me so that steam doesn't come up in my face. And then I'll lay the lid over to the side and then we will wait five minutes before I take any of the jars out. Uh, but it gives that a chance, the jars a chance to acclimate to the atmospheric pressure. I don't know if you saw that steam go up in the back, but... Let me just get rid of this over here. There we go. And none of the jars broke. They're all bubbling inside. And we will just wait for those little magic pings to happen. Um, I'll bring you guys back in about five minutes whenever I can take the jars out. The five minutes is up. I have heard two pings already. And I'm just going to lift these out. You can still see all the bubbling that's going on. These need to set 12 to 24 hours. Um, you don't touch the top to see if it has dented in, um, to see if it is sealed for at least three or four hours. 
with it. And I usually don't touch them until the six to 12 hours is up. Because if you do before that and it pops down, you can create a false seal, which could allow the seal to break later on. It may not hold on it. But this is seven pints. I've got at least seven more pints of ch uh, chicken to put up. I need to let this cool off enough that I can pour the water out. And then we have to start off all over again with it being cold. So I hope that you guys have learned something from this. If you have any tips for me and what's been done, you know, be sure and put it down in the comments. I'm always willing to learn uh, because everybody has something that they can teach and everybody has something that they can learn from it. But, you know, if you're nervous about canning, um, you know, read your instruction manual several times. Get on YouTube and look at the videos for it. Do you have questions? <coughs> Bentley, shush, shushies. <coughs> shush. Uh, if you have questions, you can always call the company for the canner, that the brand that you've got, and ask them questions. You can also go to your local uh, extension. Usually it's located at a college in the county. Uh, they are a wealth of knowledge on canning, dehydrating, food preservation. Um, if they don't know the answer to it, they will find out the answer for you. I've talked to them several times. If you have got the pressure canner that has got the dial on it, you can even take it there and get it calibrated for free. So, you know, they're, uh, they're just like a little gem that a lot of people don't know about. But I do hope that you will give it a try. Um, if you want to, the first time that you do canning, put, um, water, just can water. You can't run anything with water. See if it seals or not. That water is considered sterile after it is through processing. You know, if you run it through for the 75 minutes, it can be used to clean woods. You can use it, woods. <laughs> you can use it to clean wounds. You can use it to drink. It can last for years like that. Um, and you get experience in the canning part of it. And, you know, if you do have any questions, put them down below and I'll see if I can answer them. If I can't, I will try and find somebody that can answer them for you. But I just want to encourage people. We are a community. We are here to help each other and guide each other and lean on each other when we need to. So I hope, like I said, I hope this encourages you and I will catch you in the next video. Just real quick, I wanted to show you the box. This is the brand of lids that I used, the inserts. I have used them. This is February 2023. I started using them in the spring of 2022. I have had a 100% seal rate, and trust me, I have canned a lot, and especially a lot of meat this year. So I hope that you uh, give them a chance. I know I saw some videos that had negative reviews on it. They used one insert and made a judgment, or they just used a couple of them. There can always be bad batches. If you ever do have issues with any canning lid, no matter what the brand is, contact the company because chances are they're going to send you another one uh, to replace it because there can be bad batches in it. So, official this time, I will catch you guys later. The canning is done. I got 13 pints of the chicken breast. Well, two of them are chicken breast. The other 11 are... Uh, chicken thighs and then I also canned one pint of chicken broth that was left over obviously this isn't showing all of them but it was done with Denali lids again another 100% seal on it I really do highly recommend these lids um, I haven't had any issues with them I've been using them since um, like last May with no issues and they have got the best customer service. Um, if you do have any questions, you can always call them and ask them about it. Because I also got their dehydrator called The Beast. And I will be doing a video on that when I get something else to dry <laughs> in it. So I hope you all take care. Um, you know, keep canning, keep moving forward. Don't go into debt over this because there is always going to be bills to pay. And just to let you know, I've got no affiliation with Denali other than being a really super happy customer of theirs.
Y'all take care and I'll catch you in the next video.